Hello everyone. Welcome to video two of chapter five. Okay, so in this video, we continue our study of uh, the example one, and uh, we now ask the second question. So what if now instead the uh, nutrition requirements are being adjusted? How would that affect our solution? Okay, let's try to analyze the situation. So now let B1, B2 be the minimal amount of nutrients A and B. So with this change, we will need to change the constraints in the LP problem. Okay, so our minimization problem is now being adjusted. Um, that's the same. And these are changed, the constraint. And the right-hand side is now being replaced by B1 and B2. And uh, we see that um, if we want to visualize this graphically, it's kind of a difficult because um, we can't even nail down the feasible region clearly because B1, B2 are the two parameters that will vary here. So what shall we do? So thanks to the duality theorem, we know that we could study the dual problem instead and it should give the same solution. So let's form the dual. So now we have two variables, y1, y2, one for each of the constraint. And, uh, and now the b1, b2 here appear in the objective function and the constraints here are now fixed with the numbers, okay? So let's study the dual problem with the graphing methods. Okay, so here um, we go through a similar process as we did um, for the first question. Now, for the dual problem, we define three lines Line one and line two, the red and the blue one, are the two lines coming from the two constraints where I set equal sign to the inequality sign. So these would give me the border of the feasible region. Okay, So I have this is the blue line, the straight line, that's the red one. You can easily verify it by yourself and as a practice. And then the feasible region will be the region that's below both of these lines, but then at the same time is uh, in the first quadrant. So it's in this quadrilateral region shaded here. And the third one is the line for the objective function. So put a constant k, and then this line, along this line, the objective function will be k. Okay, so three um, vertices of the feasible region of interest we label it here, Q1, Q2, and Q3. So um, here Q2 is the intersection of those two lines, red and blue. And you could solve these two equations and find Y1, Y2, and you see that's 1 and 2. Okay? So um, from the previous discussion, we also know that the slopes of those three lines are of importance, so let's compute them. So S1 is for the line 1, is the red one, it's negative 10 over 3, S2 is negative 4 over 5, and then S3 for the green one is negative B1 over B2. Okay, and you see that S1 is less than S2, so this is more down than that one. Okay, and then depending on the relationship of S3 with respect to S1 and S2, we have three situations. So the first one is that um, S3 is bigger than S2. S2 is the bigger one among S1 and S2, which means uh, the, the lines will be, will be um, going less steep uh, than the blue one. Okay, maybe going like this. And then you move this up and down, and it will hit Q1. So Q1 will be your 
optimal point. And the second is um, when this S3 is between S1 and S2, so it's an intermediate slope. And then if you move such a line parallelly up and down, you will hit Q2. So Q2 will be your optimal point. And then the third one is S3 is even less than S1, so it's more steep than the red one. And then you move this and then you will hit Q3 as your optimal point. Okay, so it's very um, similar to the discussion we did for the first question once we convert it into the dual problem. Okay, and then we can conclude that we can solve the dual problem and we can find the maximum value for any given B1 and B2. So the values will be the B value evaluate, uh, the value of V evaluated at the solution Q1, Q2, and Q3 for the three cases. So here is, I wrote them out. And here I summarize the cases by plugging the number for S1, S2, and S3, and that's what we get. Okay, so here again, there's observation that the optimal solution point, which Q we will be picking, it only depends on the ratio B1 over B2. Okay, so after we have solved the dual problem, and then we apply duality theorem, which says that the this max value here for the dual would also be the mean value for the original problem. Okay, so this is the first example. We um, actually vary parameters in the problem and observe how the solution is being changed by them. Okay, so next one we'll look at another example um, a little bit more um, complex. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.